I stood on the edge of the pool, petrified. All around me, kids happily backstroked and breaststroked and crawled, but my knees were dry and they were trembling because I had a secret. And no one had ever taught me to swim. Finally, I took a deep breath and I leapt into the chlorinated depths, flailing and gasping and sinking until my feet hit the bottom and I could slither onto dry land. I did this every day, all summer when I was 11. From then on, I could kind of sort of swim, swim enough to get by. But for decades after, I stayed in the shallow end or on the beach while everybody else was frolicking freely in the water, heedless of the peril that they were in. And my skills stayed frozen at that level for the next 40 years. And then for my 55th birthday, my wife bought me swimming lessons. What for, I said. I know how to swim. You don't, she replied, and you need to learn. My instructor was a genius, and my lessons were a revelation, and I discovered that almost everything that I knew about swimming was wrong. I didn't know how to breathe, to move my limbs and my head, or to coordinate my movements, but I was willing to learn, and soon I went from being as hydrophobic as a tabby to carving laps like Michael Phelps. You'll probably see me, see me on the podium in Paris in 2024. And this isn't the only skill that I've been half-assing. And almost always, it's because I was self-taught. Flossing, driving, drawing, cooking, typing, money management, dog training, nutrition. Not to mention dozens of pieces of tech equipment and software applications that I just ripped out of the box like a nine-year-old on Christmas morning, using them immediately, the manual untouched. We learn just what we need to know to get started. and We ignore most of the features because they seem complicated and irrelevant to the task immediately at hand. And hey, gizmos are complex. They have a bewildering number of buttons and menus and commands, but we just want to watch our show or call our kids. We don't have a PhD in electrical engineering, so we ignore all the other stuff. But there's a price to pay for being oblivious. First of all, we're not getting our money's worth. Your phone or your computer can do so many incredible things, can automate complex tasks, can make life so much easier, but most of the time it just seems too hard to learn, so we just stick to what we know. You figure out how to drill a hole or drive to the mall or warm up a TV dinner, and we just leave it at that. We use the most powerful computers that were ever made, like a typewriter or a radio or a telephone, and that's enough. Or we self-teach the rudiments of a skill. We learn to draw from a quickly skimmed book. We learn to dance from a YouTube video. We learn to read from our mom who's cooking dinner. We learn to drive from our dad who just wants to get it over with. And then we just keep repeating whatever steps we figured out decades ago. But that's not enough. I'm sure there's a certain amount of progress that's possible by just making do and muscling through, but trial and error will only get you so far. It's not just inefficient, Sometimes it just plain doesn't work. I could keep practicing what I thought was swimming, but I'd never get to the other side of the pool no matter how much I flailed. I was just working hard to cement poor skills. And be honest, at the back of our minds, we know that we don't know. We know that we're skimming the surface. We know that we're staggering along while others are sprinting. We blame our shortcomings on our genes or our time constraints. But the problem is, so often, we just don't really know what we're doing. And we don't have coaches or teachers or even critics watching us and caring enough to point out the correct way. 
We know we could do better, but we just keep shunting it down the road. The idea of starting from scratch seems overwhelming. It involves pain and toil and humiliation and discomfort. And we hate to have our flaws pointed out. We shrink from change. Self-improvement riles that monkey, the inner critic in our head, who tells us that we're wasting time, which is stay safely where we are. And we can get by with what we're doing. We can live with always struggling to parallel park properly, to, to fry a decent egg, to take a proper photo, to keep track of passwords. Yeah, there may be better ways, but I'm fine the way I am. Please leave me alone. So recently I decided to re-examine how I write. To, to clean out and to rebuild my toolbox, my, my craft, my skills, my ability to communicate my ideas clearly and compellingly, to fully master all the devices that I write with, to perfect how I, how I research ideas and, and how I catalog them, to, to really learn how to compose sentences and paragraphs, to use punctuation correctly, to understand the best way to, to edit what I write, to use my time efficiently. I've been researching new computer applications. I've been forcing myself to become proficient in all of their features and to understand completely how they work. I've been rereading books on writing craft, unopened since I was 25. I've been learning how to read more closely and how to take better notes. And I've been studying the peculiarities of writing online. Quite different from writing advertising or books or school papers. It's like going back to school except most of the stuff is things I never learned in school. I didn't major in writing or English or journalism, and I'm not sure I would have learned all of this stuff if I had. After writing for more than a half a century and getting paid to do it for 40 years, why would I put myself through this? Because I love words, and I love writing, and I love reading, and I want to do it better to go on new adventures, to discover new things, but also because I want to lead an authentic life, to, to drop my crutches and to get rid of these jerry-rigged shortcuts, to push past all these excuses that I've made for myself, to be all that I can actually be, to enjoy all that life has to offer, to live in the zone. It's incredibly freeing to be on solid ground at last, to be confident that my foundations are strong, even if it took a lot of work to rebuild them. For too many years, I thought that swimming meant not drowning. And now I'm learning how to fly. The idea for this video started with one of the essays that I write every week. I write them just to send out to people who subscribe and they're free. I do it for the same reason that I make YouTube videos, because I have ideas and I really want to share them with you. You can get my essays too if you'd like. Just go to dannysessays.com, tell me where you want to get them, and I'll start sending them to you this week. I hope you do. Thanks for listening.